Oh, really? German-British economic relations should be promoted again after Brexit. And there is one focus. That could be movement on another topic as well, though. But let's start with one. Germany and Great Britain want to deepen their cooperation in the energy sector. And power cables are planned between Great Britain and the German North Sea coast. I made a video on one example already. And this is provided for in a declaration that was signed in London on Friday by Economics and Climate Protection Minister Robert Habeck from the German Greens and British Energy Minister Claire Coutinho. Power cables are planned between Great Britain and the German North Sea coast, according to a statement. It was signed on Friday in London, as I said, by Habeck and uh, Coutinho. That's a name I always have to watch out for, according to delegation circles. And the media portal Pioneer first reported about this. It was said that cooperation on wind farms in the North Sea via so-called hybrid interconnectors should generate substantial green electricity and hydrogen imports in the future. The Neuconnect submarine cable connection between the Isle of Grain and Wilhelmshaven is already being planned. I talked about this in that other video. Regular operations should begin in 2028. In addition, the Tarkon interconnector should be developed between Niederlang in the Emsland and Essex. Commissioning is therefore planned for 2030. A submarine cable connection from northern Germany to Scotland is also planned, incorporating Scottish wind farms. Great Britain is particularly strong in the offshore sector, that means with wind farms in the North Sea. At the end of September, Germany and Great Britain had already announced that they wanted to work more closely together on the expansion of so-called green hydrogen. We speak of green hydrogen when electricity from renewable energy sources is used to produce it. And Habeck said economic relations between Germany and Great Britain should be restored. The energy sector is particularly suitable for this. Cooperation on wind farms in the North Sea via so-called hybrid interconnectors should generate substantial green electricity and hydrogen imports in the future as it was said. And uh, as I said, the Neuconnect submarine cable connection between the Isle of Grain and Kent and southern England um, in, in, and uh, Wilhelmshaven is already being planned. Once completed, it will be Britain's second longest multipurpose power line with around 725 kilometers of land and submarine cables. And as I said, regular operations should begin by 28. According to Habeck, up to 1.5 million households should be supplied with reliable, affordable and clean energy. And uh, the other one I mentioned, the interconnected Tarkon, that's running between the Emsland, that is uh, f just a few hundred kilometers uh, north of my hometown, that's for 2030. And uh, I'm still looking for information on the part between Germany and Scotland. You know that uh, Britain has a lot of offshore wind farms and there are still discussions about the onshore ones. But according to Habeck, around 75% of the installed offshore wind capacity in the North Sea is in German and British waters. At the end of September, as, as I said, Germany and Great Britain already announced that they want to work more closely. But now on Friday, they finally signed something else and not just saying we want to. And uh, green hydrogen, from my point of view, will be an important resource in the future. But Habeck said that the British government cannot yet say how much of the future hydrogen produced in Great Britain will be needed there and whether hydrogen can be imported to Germany. Hydrogen should play a key role in the energy transition. That means in the switch to more climate friendly production processes, for example, in the steel industry, you can put them on green hydrogen. The federal government announced in the summer that it would create significantly more generation options in Germany by 2030 as well. And Habeck said that around a third of the hydrogen required should be produced in Germany and two thirds would have to be imported. 
With a view to trade between the EU and Great Britain, Habeck spoke out in favor, as I mentioned in another video, of exempting electric cars from tariffs for longer as well. The customs exemption for electric cars agreed after Brexit will expire at the end of the year. However, it has not yet been possible to ramp up battery production in the EU. They didn't do their homework, but in Britain either. And that's why, like the British side, he is committed to extending the customs exemption for three years. The decision must be made at European level, but I do encourage other European partners to also support them, said Habeck. The background is that due to Britain's exit from the EU, new customs rules are actually due to come into force on January 1st in 2024. Vehicles whose value added is less than 45% in the EU or Great Britain should be subject to a tariff of 10%. However, due to the lack of in-house battery production in Great Britain and the EU, this cannot be avoided for electric cars in the foreseeable future. And British car manufacturers therefore fear that they will no longer be competitive in their important EU export market. But German car manufacturers also have to fear that tariffs will be incurred when exporting to Great Britain in the future. And as I mentioned several times, the Automotive Industry Association on both sides had called for the current rules to be extended until the end of 2026. But the UK and the EU agreed to a phased transition period for the introduction of rules of origin on electric vehicles that happened in the Trade and Cooperation Agreement, the TCA. And this was because the current supply chain for EVs is not yet fully localized within either the UK or EU, and applying the full rules of origin immediately would have disrupted trade and supply chains. But the periods that are ending now, like the first one that ends on December 31st in, in 23, it says that 60% um, can originate from outside UK or EU, but that's to be limited to 55% in 2026. And uh, it's also um, supposed to be limited further to 45% in 2027. And yes, they will talk about this. They will also review the whole thing at the end of 2026 or after the end of 2026. You know, there are a lot of things they have to discuss anyway about the working of the TCA. But honestly, I think the working together on the interconnectors is a good thing. Yeah, we have to find a way to work together after Brexit with all the hurdles that have been introduced with Brexit. But the extension of this transition period would really be harmful for the EU because it is part of the TCA. And if you change ex those periods from the TCA, that will make it absolutely harder for the EU in their negotiations on trade agreements with other countries in the world. And the EU better will not agree to this. And so I hope that other countries will not follow the um, wish of the German government here and that other countries will block the extension. They had a long time to adjust to the new realities and they have just not done their homework the electric vehicle manufacturers had much more time than other businesses to um, adapt to brexit they had a much longer transition period than the others and they could have done about something about this a long time ago but on both sides of the english channel they just slept but nevertheless if you want to know something else the next video is right here in the end screen i'll see you there i'll be back